Jordan. Yay. Yay. Nice to see you. Delightful to see you. <laughs> long, 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 long time. Another kiss. <laughs> sweet man. Yeah. Still uh, are sweet man. You always were a sweet man. That's kind of you to say. Well, I was true. a sweet boy when you saw me. I know, you're a little lad. I've become a man now. Yeah, <laughs> no, you're a little lad. I uh, know, well, when did I meet you? Must have been, oh, well, anyway, well, it'll be 75, 76 or something or other. Mm. How did you meet my mum? Do you know, I wanted to, um, meeting is a difficult, I, I'm not really sure I can remember the actual meeting, but I really wanted to work at the shop. Right. W wanted to work at the sex shop. Right, when um, it was the sex shop. Yeah, right. well, it was just changing, they were just changing the, the uh, front from Let It Rock right. to sex and putting the rubber up and what have you, pink rubber. And I really wanted to work there because I was doing a sort of similar thing, truthfully, down here. It was a load of, you know, not nice netty things with bouffant hairdos and... What were you doing? You were making your own stuff? Yeah. Right, okay. Just gleaning it from places, you know. Uh -huh. Just going... Uh, Brighton is a really great place for um, second-hand shops and... Okay, so yeah. you were... Uh, so you obviously you're living down here in yeah. Seaford and Brighton. Yep. And, uh, and you started doing... So... I mean, punk wasn't happening then, it was just way before it. So, yeah. But you were all, you were avant-garde or whatever the word is at the time. I don't know, I don't know, the scene at that time. 73, 74. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so you were making your own clothes, you started yeah. like that. And then, what, you went up King's Road and... I read a tiny little bit and I'm not really sure where it was, but I think it might have been something like Honey Magazine or... Right. One of those little glosses that were very popular at the time saying you know go to this place it was four or five lines right go to this place in the king's road it's interesting and it was it was kind of like not raving about it or anything but there was a little tiny picture and i thought wow this is me mm -hmm. but it's in london and that was the let it rock shop yeah or whatever right yeah there. I did an interview with Glenn Matlock. He said that he would help make the sex sign that was outside really? the shop. So yeah, it must yeah. have been about the same time as, as you went yeah, down there. Yeah. Right. Anyway, the place was fucking closed. I went all that way from Seaford uh -huh. and there was just closed written on the door, which was, was not untypical uh -huh. really. Uh -huh. So I thought, well, okay, all right. Anyway, I came back down to Seaford and I thought, well, I really want to get based in London somehow because I'd been chucked out of school for, I mean, not chucked out, but asked to leave and change my look. Right. Um, when I was like 14, 15. And Were I thought, you the only one or was there a group of you? No, it's just the only one. Right. It's just so, me. So how come you were so different? A lot of people have asked me that and I, I really haven't got an answer. Yeah, right. No, it's not. That yeah, yeah. Right. I just felt comfortable in um, how I was. And uh, um, get, I guess it's a bit like, you know, when you're a cubist artist or something and people going, that's not going to sell. Right, no one's yeah. going to look at that. That uh -huh. look, looks like crap. Or that looks weird. But you still do it. And I just felt completely comfortable with... Uh, my image and making my image and making me as good as I thought I could be and, and as happy as I thought I could be. So anyway, I, I got a job in Harrods, actually, right. which is really odd, yeah. just to get based in London. And then I did get to the shop. Did you tone down your look? No, nope. nope. I know, I had pale, um, mint green foundation right uh -huh. when I worked at right. Harrods okay. my mum said to me you will never get a job going to that interview at Harrods looking like that and I came back I did the interview came back and a couple of weeks later they said you got the job yeah and it was a really well, always were a pretty good <laughs> work good in shops for the same <laughs> so I must have noticed that. it was really good because um uh I, I came back and uh, they, said, um, they said to me, I'd got the job 
And whether they thought I was going to change the way I looked when I went back there for the job, but I didn't. And I just went there and they were, they were great. And it was really, a, it was called Way In. Mm-hmm, right. You know, which was a play on Way Out. Right, okay, okay. The, the actual yeah, boutique right. was like on the fourth floor of Harrods and it was called Way In. And it sold a lot of quite posh clothes and stuff. But, um, How but long were you there for? I was there for about six months, I would think, okay. probably. Most. But then you managed to get down the shop and it wasn't open one, one time. Well, I'd it. already been there when it wasn't open. The second time it was open right. and there was a guy called Michael Collins in there. Right, uh-huh. And there was this great... I just loved what I, loved what I saw when I went in there. And there was this bed, metal bed with pink rubber yeah, sheets right. on it. And me and him just took the afternoon away. I mean, he was still serving customers, but we talked and we laughed and we just really got on. And uh, he said, well, you know, if there's a job coming up, I'll let you know. And I gave him my phone number. Right. And, and he phoned me up and said, uh, do you want to come in for an afternoon and see how it works out? And I was down there like a shot. I was really, you know, this, this, I knew this place was the place I should be. Mm -hmm. so there was no doubt. How long were you at Harrods after that? Then? Uh, I, I immediately left. <laughs> right. Okay. So, and then you were, so you were, anyway, so you were, and you ended up working in the shop until when? Until way after it was. Way, I was there for years. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm not good at dates. I mean, or yeah, or I yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. Yes, it was. You were, were you there when Jean Krell was the Yes, right. yes. Okay. And when did you leave then? And why was that? I left. Um, it was kind of a conflicting thing because I got into doing that film Jubilee. Right. And I started to work with Adam and the Ants as well. That's right, you were singing with them. I was, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, well, just the one song and singing is a very, very broad description of what okay. I did. Uh -huh. But it, it worked. And, uh, and it came kind of conflicting, really. I mean, I went through, all, I loved all the pirate gear as well. I really, you know, everything that Vivian and Malcolm did, I took on board, but made it my own in a way. Mm -hmm. and, it, and I felt really comfortable still with it. If I hadn't, I would have gone much sooner. I would have just drifted away. But I just did feel very, um, like I could personalise things still and it wasn't yeah, still some sort of formula, if you like, the word. Okay, and I suppose that really helped with the look of the stuff yeah. and advertising the stuff and yeah. like the way yeah. you style because you were pretty much an icon at the time. People knew who you were and noticed you. Mm. I mean, everyone hears it, hear about this story about how you were given, ended up getting given your own train carriage on your commute to, yeah. to, to work. It's true, it sounds like a, a myth, but in fact it is so true because they then, just couldn't put up with it. You know, the, the British Rail couldn't put up with it. But then you were quite uh, sort of sexily charged at the time. <laughs> so um, well, I often, it was quite, I don't know. Yeah, I yeah, often didn't wear any underwear and stuff, you know, and, and things no, were a bit like see-through. Yeah, yeah like, I, 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 I often don't under. believe in it, I, right. you know. Not I'm not in I, one row. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, you know, it's not. It's not a question of being. Over, that's another thing. You know, people think you're being overtly sexual in a come on-y sort of way. Right. But it's not actually to do with that. And I'm sure with your mum, it's not to do with that. It's to do with the freedom feeling of right. of um, you know, you, why wear something if you don't feel that you 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 need to wear it. And, I mean, there's a lovely shot of me walking down right by the shop, actually, mm -hmm. with that, um, what side of the bed do you lie right. on, with fuck written across the front. And I've just got a, a, a net skirt on, right. and I'm naked underneath. Right, yeah. So everyone can see everything, but I felt as comfortable as hell in that. Yeah, well, you it's know. quite cosy not having any clothes. Yeah, you're right, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't just have to be in bed, does it? <coughs> so how long did so? But anyway, you always did you live in London? Did you live in London, or did you always commute from Seaford? 
I started off living in London when I worked at Harrods. Mm -hmm. I found this mad person who I shared a flat with mm -hmm. in Sloan Square. Who's that? Like Malcolm McLaren? No. Uh, this woman uh -huh. who was really very, very, very strange. But we shared this flat. Um, and then I worked, got the job at, at, at um, Sex. And then I did commute for a while because we got sort of um, chucked out of the flat in Sloan Square, so... Right, that's where it was, Sloan Square. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so I commuted for a while and then I got... Then I stayed with um, my brother and his wife in uh, Upton Park. Right. Well, Plasto. Yeah, because it's a long way to travel every day. Yeah, yeah. So you it is. did you say you were living in London? Yeah, I was living in London. Lived in a lot of places in London. I mean, started off Sloane Square and then I, I was in Plasto. And then I went to... Um, where was the next place? I went to High Park Square, which was pretty weird. Actually, okay. but the most famous place before that was the flat in Buckingham Gate, which is right next to Buckingham Palace. Right, okay. the famous place with we had a bunch of people staying there. So and sort of the alternative monarchy. Oh, it was great. We had to walk <laughs> through St James's Hotel to get to our flat, which was had a private lift. Mm -hmm. It was a I don't know if I should say her name really, but Linda Ashby, she was in the Rock and Roll Swindle that the, her character was. Uh -huh. She had the flat in... Was she the, the prostitute? Yeah. One? Yeah, Linda. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Linda had this flat, which was bloody amazing. I mean, it really was. We had this private lift and all of us stayed there. I mean, Malcolm, Sid, John, the whole band used to come and visit. The Pistols, the... Uh, heartbreakers. Yeah, right. It was a ha just a, a wonderful place. Uh, um, but the rent payers were me and Simon Barker, Derek Dunbar, and okay. uh, you know we all chipped in. Okay, it was Derek and uh, Derek Simon. and Simon. Right, yeah, okay. we all chipped in on the rent to Linda. Linda, Linda um, had the place. Did she use the, was that where she brought her clients to? She did. Right, okay. She had a really great client That's called sure. Dick. Uh-huh. <laughs> they used to come in and sort of say hi to the Sex Pistols and you and then go off with Linda. I know, it was the best. <laughs> I think the guy used to like being dominated. Uh -huh. One of the guys, that she because she, she did outside work and I didn't bring them all to the flat. But the guy that she used to bring was called Dick from Maidenhead. I'm sure he's dead now, so he right. was old then, elderly, right. very elderly then. Uh -huh. And she, we had a private lift and she used to make, she, they used to go shopping, food shopping. She used to make him walk up all the stairs mm -hmm. with the carrier bags full of food. Right. So. While she got up on the lift. He would come in and sit with us and John Rotten and Derek and Simon sit there waiting for what he'd come for. And she would say something like, um, and he would make small talk uh -huh. with all of us when we all knew what he was there for. <laughs> and then she'd, she'd come round the corner of the door and go, Dick, can you help me move the wardrobe in the bedroom? And he'd go, but there's some very strong men here. You're looking at Derek and... Uh -huh. No, I said, could you come and help me move the wardrobe? And in fact, they were all integral wardrobes right. that no, were like nailed to the wall code. it was a code, code for yeah right. anyway it's lucky lucky didn't die really i should have taken up a whatever happened to linda linda went and lived with dick i think right okay and... i always heard this story that um that she was a dominatrix and that uh she'd sort of occasionally she sort of met people she couldn't you know would ask things that were too much and one of them was this guy who wanted a red hot poker put on his <gasps> testicles. No! He wouldn't do that. Anyway. My <laughs> best stories I heard was um, this guy who 
who liked her to bring a balloon, blown up balloon, and put it on his lap, and she, she'd bounce up and down on it right. until it popped. Until it popped. That sounds quite That's good. It's quite actually. good, actually, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, um, and the other one was that she used to, there was a guy who used to like her to defecate on a glass table while he was underneath it. That's a fairly common yeah, one. That's pretty common, yeah. But yeah. she used to have to sort of plan that in advance because it's not something you can just yeah, do. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. um, and the other one was she asked me several times if I'd go as a twosome with her. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really into it, you know. She could do it herself. Didn't need me there. She knew the ropes. <laughs> Okay, so what else? I remember that uh, there's this shoot. There's this shoot. I did um, a post about this uh, magazine called Curious Sex, and in it are all those pictures of you in rubber. Yeah. And Michael Collins and and and, and Steve Jones and some other redhead woman. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. All shot in the sh shot in the shop mm. at the time. Mm. But anyway, I remember. I mean, I remember that you were. I always sort of wore a lot of the rubber and latex, which was quite, uh, it was quite new at the time, and quite interesting. But yeah, do you remember that? Uh, do you remember that shoot? I do. Um, going back to the rubber thing. I mean, it was for some sort of sex education. It was. Magazine, it was. Like right. Yeah, there was some quite serious text that went with the with the photos. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a copy of it. Yeah. The thing was. Uh, for me, uh, and I'm going back to what the th Vivian and Malcolm's designs, is that there was everything that came along I really liked, otherwise I wouldn't have stayed there. Right. And the rubber thing I adopted as uh, um, just normal everyday clothes. Yeah. Because I felt they were great. They look great like that. Uh -huh. It wasn't a fetish thing in, in any way. Um, it was something to be worn with pride and beauty. Well, that was the, the theme of the shop, really. I mean, it wasn't a sex shop. No, it, it wasn't, it was like, yeah. You know, it was to sort of hide, hide you know, to be hidden away in the no, bedroom. No, no, no. It was, it was actually a fashion shop yes. based around promoting, yeah. you know, Outrageous, outrageous ideas like sex in the public. Yeah, <laughs> but to be <laughs> honest, yeah, but uh, to be honest, a lot of people didn't buy those clothes. Uh, the the general public didn't buy those clothes to be worn out much. I didn't see many people wearing what I was wearing. Yeah, right. Out to uh, gigs. I mean, I wore. It's great. This I wore. It's a little mini skirt. Well, not mini skirt. It was just just above the knee. Uh, the, the black uh, latex skirt with that lovely top that had the zip that went diagonally yeah, across, right. which was just beautiful. Yeah. Right. yeah. And I wore that to the Cannes Film Festival mm -hmm. when Jubilee was there. Um, right. And it was so hot that the whole thing melted right. off me in the... It melted? Yeah. The skirt melted right off my body really? in the middle of a restaurant. Right. So what? It and when you've got no knickers on, it's really difficult. Uh huh. Well, that sounds like um, <laughs> something that's just pretty normal for you. So, and there was nothing I could do. <laughs> couldn't I? Couldn't mend it. I needed. So what did uh, you do then? Um, I sort of stayed in sit because I didn't want to miss my meal. It was a really good meal we were having, so I just sort of wrapped it and tucked it under my buttock. And then when I got up. I sort of just sort of held it together with yeah, my hands. Right. Yeah, 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 I had to improvise. Yeah, yeah. but I, mean, I know it was a stupid thing to wear. It was a heat, it's a heat wave at Cannes well, Film know, Festival, but it looked beautiful. Melted. I thought it just would did. Just get a bit, you know, more stretchy than usual. Anyway. No, no, it was a heat wave. So it, it was so you right? Did so? Did people notice? Yeah. Yeah, right, so, yeah, that's very good. Unfortunately, the, I mean, they already noticed how I looked without the rubber, so yeah. they just so added a, to it. Quite a show, you know, yeah. there's a woman with her, yeah. her dresses melting off as we watch. <laughs> it was just a skirt, I still had the top. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I was absolutely blisteringly hot, you can imagine. I mean, that... Mum had a... Mum used to wear the rubber as well. And yeah, I she did. That, um, 
she had a she used to wear astrakhan boots I, they were beautiful locks. no they were the, my legs. favorite boots of all yeah. time of hers rubber stockings and one night she came back and she couldn't find the key to the padlock and you know how the rubber sort of cuts off the blood to your it toe does at the end of your toe was yeah. really hurting and she was in agony and she couldn't find the key to her boots so uh, she ended up having to get the bolt cutters and cut oh, the I love it. Off of I love it. <laughs> but I remember her running up and down the corridor looking for the key. Do you know anyway. those boots were she had, there was I think there was only one pair and she had them. Right, yeah. They had a little toe cap. Uh-huh. And they were they were astrakhan. Yeah, they look like Dark sheep. Dark sheep, sort of. curly sheep. Yeah. And she had those padlocks and I so envied those boots. I really just wanted those boots. They were like little hooves, really. Yeah. They were hooves with padlocks on. But I hadn't realised that she... Because they do, that rubber really, really cuts, especially on your feet, yeah, well, cuts your circulation I off. I tried myself. Did you? Yeah. 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 Experiment yeah. Yeah. Stuff I bet you did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and that Dressing for Pleasure um, film was great. Yeah, right. Yeah. Do you remember that? I've seen some some link to it on the internet. You should yeah, watch that because yeah. it's Malcolm right. going through all the things in the shop. Right. Um, and it sort of counteracts with the Rubber Duck Club or, or the, um, the Wigan. You know the people who used to like Wigan rubber? That lovely Wigan uh, overcoat that that Malcolm and Vivian did. It was really Malcolm's right. design, that, no, which know. was a canvas with wig and with rubber over right. the top. Okay. Beautiful, wonderful, like a stormtrooper right. sort yeah, of yeah. type thing. Yeah, yeah, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, canvas with yeah. rubber impregnated yeah. with latex. Yes, that's yeah, right. Right. And uh, it was a sort serious. Like bike coat. Yeah, sort of. Sort of. Yeah. It's um, but longer. Right. It's a proper Mac, with a proper lovely belt on it. Yeah. I like belts. And um, she, we did this film for Dressing for Pleasure, which is really worth looking up. And have you got a, you don't know have a copy, you don't know where to get hold of that, do you? I mean, I it's on, it's on, you, it's on YouTube, it's I think. It's on YouTube, Yeah. Because right? I saw a bit, yes. I didn't see the whole thing with Malcolm, anyway. So yeah, I'm Malcolm is there. great in it, and, right. and, uh, because it, he's really sincere and, I mean, we both agreed just how lovely these things were. I mean, I really did love them, I, and it wasn't just a question of me trans, Positioning from one thing to another, everything that your your mum and Malcolm did were in tune with me. Right. It's it's quite extraordinary, really. In a um, way, I suppose it was sort of like an art movement where there's different people, but they're all focused on the same sort of. Yeah. In a way. Yeah, yeah, you could. I was certainly. I mean, that's what drew me to the place in the first. Did you, did you um, see much of Malcolm after he split with my mum? Few times. Didn't have so much to do with him because he no, uh, did other, he, he, what he was doing. You know, so. Malcolm was, he was like a, what I would call like a, in a way, a true artist where pe he flitted from things very quickly, mm -hmm. had a great, um, ability to take in lots of information but but then he changed his course a lot right and and, and moved around a lot and really probably I, i'll be absolutely honest i think if he'd stuck with some things a little bit more with a little bit more longevity in view mm -hmm. he would have perhaps right it's, yeah it's like a for. yeah it's like an artist who can't actually carry on with a theme the themes were always coming at him in his head and he was always moving on. Um, but I really, really, really loved the man. He was a... Mm -hmm. underst I think I understood him. Right. And what every, everyone has their opinion on him and some people... Uh, yeah, you came to the... ...don't like him, but I always thought he was great. Yeah. 
No, I had that. I, 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 I had a good opinion of him, really. I don't have these parameters about uh, etiquette right. and things like that, like some people do. Yeah, I don't you know. know. My view is a sort of overall thing. Yes. It's really, really important. Yeah. I, I couldn't have done. I thought it was it brought a lot to my life, enriched my my own life. So, yeah. of course, there were negative things. But yeah. Then there they are don't every seem day important. Yes. Anyway, with other things and everything else. So, yeah. You like put that, that in a yeah. nutshell for me. Yeah, it's exactly what I think. I think. Uh, so you, know. you came, so there, yeah, that's true that the last time I saw you was at Malcolm's funeral in was 2010, whatever. Had mm. you seen much of him before that? How did you hear about, how did you hear about Malcolm's death? Um, yeah. right, okay. Um, no, somebody, so I'm terrible with people, memories and things like that. Yeah, but a lot of it doesn't matter, matter in real terms, but yeah. who was it who told me? Um, it could have been, could have been Joe. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because he got in touch with everyone. Yeah. Let him know about them. And I contacted Joe. Uh huh. And I said, could I really want to come to it? Um, it was quite a good funeral. Uh, it's the best funeral I've ever been to. <laughs> uh, and you know, we. Um, my sister and I often do these things, you know, where you sticky on your heady, where you put a thing on, you've got to guess who you are. Right, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, and you can't see who you are. And one of our main questions that we have is, were there many people at his funeral or her funeral? Uh-huh, right. And Malcolm's rates as, I, I can't think there'd be a better funeral, really. Yeah. And, and it just pisses me off that he wasn't alive to see it. Yeah, right, it's true. And um, okay, it's going to start raining heavily. Yeah. In I know. Uh, so I think I'll have the last question, which is after you left the shop, and you say, say you worked with Adam Ant quite a bit, and you did that film True Belief. Yes. How did things go? What happened then with that? So how did that end up? Because we, I've interviewed Adam Ant for the year, and I, I see him quite often. He's, yeah. Yeah, he's a great guy. Yes. Yeah, but. Uh, but anyway, you. But anyway, so well, but nothing. But you know, but you had your stint with him. How how was that? Because this was this was after. Was this after he'd done been thrown out of that and the house and yeah, started, yeah, his, and started well. with yeah, Mark yeah, yeah. and started with Mark yeah. and done it reformed again. Well, you know, I'd always been involved with that whole thing really early on. The the real hard Dirk wears white right. socks era, era when I sang Lou with them on stage and... They've uh, remixed that now. They've, have they've they? White socks, yeah. Yeah, he did. I went to a gig about two years ago and he was redoing ah. uh, those white socks, yeah. A friend of mine has been remastering. Right, stuff, okay. Anyway. Um, the whole thing sort of ended, really, with... The question was with Adam, really, yeah. was it? Yeah. whole thing uh, didn't end. It, it had a really bad stutter right. around about Prince Charming because I wanted them to do something else. Right. I wanted them to be you something like else. Charming. No, right. I didn't. Okay. Okay. It's quite a big hit for him. Yes, I, I know, but I didn't like the whole <laughs> scene. Right. Um, so I decided that, um, and also I got, uh, yeah, I probably won't say what, I won't say what I was going to say next. Um, okay, that's all right. To piss down with it me. is, yeah. yeah. I'm wondering about this camera is all right. Yeah, the camera's all right, but yeah. Anyway, it's gone very dark. I probably got it on the wrong exposure this whole time. Do you want to run in and do one yeah, five more minutes? We can do, yeah, yeah, because yeah. we uh, need to finish that okay. last question, which was really good. Okay, hold on. It will be unfinished if we don't. I am a TV star.